I'm back here with Marcin and we're talking about Zephyr. Today we're going to be talking about menu config and ways that it can help your debugging and make for better programs and better ways to get through your programs. Marcin, what's new? How you doing? Hi Chris, um, I'm fine. Ready for recording your video. Okay, great, great. Yeah, so menu config, the first time you showed it to me, I think you had showed me a, I think we were just screen sharing and then I, I was like, what? What did I just see? Because we were going through a Zephyr program and then you were able to go and turn on and off stuff that was configured in a bunch of the project.com files and like things that were already in the system. What is menu config like as a, you know, a broad topic? Yeah, so menu config is a tool um, that is used in Zephyr, but originally it was developed for a Linux project and it's also used in several other open source projects. And it allows you to uh, interactively select uh, configuration options that uh, you want to to like enable or change. So you can change the number of buffers, uh, enable some subsystems, enable Wi-Fi, uh, sometimes uh, set up credentials for like, one go and yeah, lots of other stuff. Yeah, and so this all happens after compilation, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, usually you have some default configuration or some project configuration, and you build a project. Uh, and after that, you figure out that you're missing something or you want to enable more uh, debug logs. Um, and uh, when that happens, uh, many config is the tool that you want to use because it allows you to interactively search for uh, configuration options and uh, tweak them and then rebuild the project. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense, but I, I always remember like in my, you know, I'm doing like small embedded projects and like, I'm like, just kind of like, maybe I'm tweaking the value of something and I'm, it's hard coded in there because I'm early in prototyping and I'm just, I, you know, I change something, recompile, change something, recompile test, change something, recompile test. And like, this really cuts down on that. So it's like this great, uh, it's not a hack, it's just a great tool for this sort of thing for debugging, but then also for, you know, maybe even moving stuff out to production. Uh, how do you find that you're using it most often? Um, most often I uh, need to tweak something for uh, debugging purposes. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, I do see some problems with, let's say, communication uh, with clouds, um, uh, some problems with drivers. So in, that, in those cases, I enable um, lower level logs or more debug logs. And after that, it's, uh, I, was, I uh, usually need to uh, increase the buffer sizes of the logs so I can get more context so it can actually be uh, processed properly and print on the console that, that I use for debugging. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, and you'd also mentioned uh, embed TLS is like a library that we pull in for things. Uh, it, does it also help with like the, you know, like uh, kind of help wrangle other libraries we might be using externally because we don't have as much, you know, knowledge of what's going on right at, at the beginning of it? Yeah, so using uh, many config, we can uh, tweak uh, embed TLS options as well, we can uh, enable more debug logs from the embed TLS library, but uh, uh, overall, that's uh, quite a complicated topic because uh, <laughs> it's a big, big layer of software. So um, yeah, but uh, for sure, um, uh, menu config is the the tool that helps you to debug embed TLS as well. That's great. All right, so we have an example that you're able to show here. Can we switch over to that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're basing on uh, the hello sample from Goliath SDK right now, and uh, here's the main.c file uh, open on the right. And there's a while loop in our sample that just uh, sends the hello messages that like, prints the uh, logs of uh, what. Uh, what hello, which number of uh, hello messages currently sent, and we're sending those hello messages to, to the cloud. 
and we will doing it in the intervals of five seconds. And what we have modified right now uh, for this recording is that uh, we will print, we will lock 50 of messages instead of one. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is here, it's quite artificial, but uh, the idea is here that in case of some uh, event in uh, Zephyr, uh, there are many layers that process this event. So for example, if there's a, an interrupt from accelerometer and you want to send uh, this event to the cloud, then there, there are the drivers, there's all the, the networking layer. So there are lot, lots of things and that process this event and if you enable uh, like debug logs for all of those layers then you will end up having all those layers printing a lot of messages um, so th this is something that we want to uh, to show here in a quite artificial way but uh, we want to keep this simple as as uh, simple as possible yeah, normally we just send one log every five seconds instead of 50 logs every five seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so for, for this uh, for this sample, we just try to log 50 messages and we will build uh, this sample and run it. Right now we are using Cameo as our platform of choice because it's the simplest one to uh, to demo. And yeah, as we yeah can so there's no loading it down. So we have a uh, QMU uh, videos about it as well, like showing it. Basically, it's a it's a uh, virtual platform, so people can go and try that out without actually needing any hardware, which is great. And you use this a lot for for debugging and testing and stuff, right? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, QMU is really fast to to debug because there is no uh, process of flashing, so it's mm. much shorter in trying to uh, find bugs that exist in the software stack. Of course, you're not it's not possible to debug hardware issues, but sure. still most of, uh, let's say, modern applications based on Zephyr are very complex. So the drivers are just 5% of the whole yeah. um, say system. Right, so anything external, if you were like interacting with an LED or a switch or anything like that, you probably need to load it down to the hardware. But if you're doing network stuff, like you're often doing when you're developing yeah. stuff for, for Zephyr, that makes a lot of sense, it feels like. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Okay, so going back to our logs, we can see that every time we try, every five seconds, we try to print 50 messages. So uh, as you can see, previously it was 849 yeah. right now it's 899 and increasing every yeah. like, 50 yeah. and uh, what you can notice here is that we miss some of the messages and Zephyr actually tells us about this that uh, 18 messages were dropped and what we want in this situation is to like be able to see those messages. And the reason why they are not seen is most likely that the buffer sizes are not big enough to store all of, the, all of those log messages. Hmm. Uh, so what we will do right now is to uh, enter menu config. Okay, so this is a switch on the command line. So it was build dash T and then- Yes, uh, with the dash, dash T we specify the target. So. By default, it just builds all the default uh, files. So this is the, the firmware or the image for Kimio that we actually run. Uh, the T targets, we just want to run the Kimio. And with menu config, uh, we enter menu config. And yeah. right now we are able to tweak the configuration of this uh, yeah. application. So this is this is the view where I was like, what are we seeing here? This is all new. This look, I mean, like, it looks like a, you know, a DOS BIOS loading screen almost, but, uh, but it's, it, I had never seen it before. So it was very shocking to me. Yeah, there is, there are a ton of options and they, they are grouped in subsystems. Um, and yeah, basically option groups. 
And uh, what you can do here is to simply uh, try to enter each of the module and look for all the options that we have right now. Uh, but uh, for our example, we just want to tweak the logging subsystem. So we can either try to find it in this uh, big tree of options, but there's actually a and faster and easier way to do this. So as you can see right right here on the bottom, uh, there are some shortcuts. Yeah. And here the slash is jump to symbol. Basically, it's just for searching new options, like searching options that you want to tweak. So we will press slash, uh, slash right now. And we want to uh, tweak login. And we have many of options here still, but... Yeah, so we can see that it is logging, so that's a good start, right? Logging equals yeah. yes, or log equals yes. Yeah, the good thing about this about it is that not only um, the configuration options are searched for, but also the uh, the names of those configuration options. So we entered the logging, and we still were able to find the right uh, subsystem. Yeah. And we want to enter logging, and then search manually using arrows to uh, select proper configuration. So okay. we'll press. Enter right now. Uh, once again, enter to and to see. Uh, okay, all so that options. so logging just took us to the sub. So that was you're saying that took us to the subsystem, and now we're like just kind of navigating through the, the hierarchy. Yes, that is right. Great. And here we want to find uh, an option that will be responsible for increasing or configuring configuring the buffer size and how much messages we are able to, to print. Um, so we'll try to enter the processing submenu. And here we have some options that look interesting and they look okay. like uh, like sizes because they are big enough, let's say. Uh, so here we have a stack size. Stack size shouldn't be uh, responsible for uh, dropping messages, but here we have number of bytes dedicated for the logger internal buffer. So this sounds mm -hmm. like something that might be worth increasing. And we'll press enter, and right now we are able to modify this value. Um, okay. So in case of Cameo, the nice thing about it is that uh, there are <laughs> more resources available so right. when increasing stack sizes and buffer sizes, you are able to increase them to, to really big values. So you are yeah. sure that they will be enough for development purposes. Right. So that's, that's I was gonna nice ask, because... why, not, why not just set it to 65, 5, 5, 3, 6 all the time? But the answer is because of silicon, right? <laughs> if you're on an yeah. you know, ESP32, it's only got so much memory in RAM. and It would be in right. RAM, right? Yeah. Yes, ESP32 is, has quite big resources in case like mm -hmm. uh, RAM. Uh, but if you have some tiny Cortex M0 processors, then you have like 32 kilobytes of RAM memory. So mm -hmm. increasing uh, by 10 kilobytes might overflow your RAM usage. So that's, yeah. that's not something that you are able to do on those tiny microcontrollers. So that's why... Right. Um, that's another reason why Cameo is very helpful during debugging because you have like megabytes of RAM memory and yeah. you are able to like just literally uh, add a zero and that's it. So that's the simplest <laughs> and the fastest way to, yeah. to increase the debug rate. And actually, yeah. that's something that, that I do when uh, running the Cameo. Platform. Right, it's like a sanity check. It's like, is it this problem? You're able to just go yeah. and try it on the virtual one, and then you can always back calculate it to the to the real silicon. Yeah, that's right. And you are able to increase many buff, buffer uh, configuration options. And after the problem stops reproducing, then you know which one was right. it. Right, yeah. And right now we'll press escape to um, 
I scaled the, all those uh, uh, subsystem configurations. And after the last, uh, after the last time I pressed escape, uh, there's a pop up that uh, it just ask us whether we want to save or not. So we want to save, we press yes. Okay. And, and you don't need to go rebuild at this point, is that right? Um, if you will execute the run target, it will mm -hmm. rebuild automatically. So we will ah, just okay. do that. Okay. And ah. voila, we have ah. only 50 <laughs> configuration <laughs> options. You. So Thank goodness we can find, send send fifty messages at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, it, uh, you mentioned MBTLS uh, on the beginning, and it's quite useful to. Uh, it's a common problem of MBTLS because there are lots of negotiation going on between the cloud and your device or Cameo, mm -hmm. and there are like hundreds of messages printed at once. So this is something that really happens uh, when trying to debug problems. So uh, we we are not showing the MBTLS case right now because it's really complicated and there are lots of messages that it's they are hard to understand without looking into the code. But yeah. here we try to artificially um, see this problem and how to solve it when when we actually need to debug some complex subsystem, such as MBTLS or some other. That's great. I, I think that this, um, you know, this is a great debugging method. This is a great way to configure your system. And we're going to do more videos about debugging because that is something that I think people coming from the, you know, maybe bare metal, uh, you know, embedded world moving into Zephyr as well. There's just, there are so many more layers to negotiate and just figure out where, you know, like where an error message might be emitting from and just like making sure that you're seeing all the things necessary. So I think that having, having more debugging skills and people's tool sets is going to be really useful. And this is a great one. So, um, anything else people should know about menu config in general? Um, yeah, so there are many, many options. Um, so, when you compare the Zephyr, uh, let's say, application development flow and bare metal, uh, the difference is that with Zephyr, we have lots of layers that are already developed, they are open source, and you are able to use them. So uh, in that case, you want to have a set of configuration options that are really useful to configure to change. And in case of bare metal, you are always able to hard code uh, and yeah. change them on the fly. But um, when when you have so many layers of uh, software that you use, like uh, with Zephyr, then uh, you want to have a subset of what is uh, really meaningful to to configure. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think this is really good. And I think even just from a, you know, people coming into Zephyr, it's a great way to go and kind of just see what's under the hood, right? So people can go and just navigate through menus, see what's there, see what their setup is ready for. So this has been a really great look at menu config, and we will have more stuff about debugging. Thanks for joining us, Marcin, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks.